Hey, everybody! Hey, what's up? Welcome to the October 27th show of Daily Gaming News. I am Kaisa. I am Marone, and welcome early gang to the Daily Gaming News channel here on Twitch as we take an hour out of the day to dive into all the juicy details going on in the gaming industry. And we have a lot of them. We're going to start off with some bad news. But first of all, how are you doing, Marone? Doing good. Been crazy busy. Not sleeping as much, but that's okay. Working on this film. What about you? How have you been? Um, I've been really good. Um, yeah, good, good, good stuff. Things are picking back up again. I think a lot of companies are just like, we're, we're living in the pandemic. We're just going to do our projects. We're just going to make do with it versus like before where everyone's like, we'll just wait and see what happens. Now people are like, screw it. We're just going to go ahead and do stuff. Yeah, that does. In a good way, in a safe way. Yes, right. In a, in a very good and safe way. And, and just a quick heads up because we will be doing reruns as we've talked about tomorrow's episode, which is Wednesday, the 28th. If you're watching this that day, this will be a rerun because we will be taking that day off. And then we'll be back on Thursday, the 29th. So just a nice little heads up at the front. Yes, there's going to be no show tomorrow. I have an audition, which is great, but also sucks that we're going to skip tomorrow's show, but we'll be running a rerun. But let us dive into uh, the topics we are going to be covering today, because of course, right out the gate, we're going to be talking about um, Cyberpunk 2077 and it being delayed yet again. Which I thought was mean when I first heard about it, but here we are. Uh, we're going to get into 100 Thieves and how it's turning its LA headquarters into a voting center. We're going to be talking about the Uncharted movie, as there was a photo of Tom Holland as Nathan Drake, as well as recently, Mark Wahlberg uh, put out a selfie of himself. And then we'll get into Star Wars The Force Unleashed, reportedly being revived for a third sequel. Uh, also, if you have Facebook and you have Oculus Games, don't delete your Facebook account because you'll lose your games for good. We'll get back into Cyberpunk 2077 and how the the devs say that we've seen nothing yet, apparently. Of being cut from the game? Of being cut from the game. Sorry, I misread that. No problem. Yeah. And then we're also going to be talking about <laughs> Facebook again, where the new video game streaming service seems just like a big push for the tech giant to sell more ads. Big surprise. For Star Wars Squadrons, baby Yoda is going to be coming. I'm going to have that in my ship so badly. Also going to be talking about the announcement of Netflix's live-action Assassin's Creed series is on the way. And then there is Little Nightmares 2 gameplay, which is out, so we're going to do a watch and react to that. And of course, as always, what's in the mug? What's in the mug? To anyone returning, you know how this goes. Anyone new in the chat, you're welcome to guess what is in our mug. You'll get an internet high five if you guess it. <laughs> And that's that's a big deal, just so you know. <laughs> but what is also a big deal, I think, is for every gamer around the world who has been waiting for this game to come out, Cyberpunk 2077 is delayed until December 21st. They tweeted out earlier today at 9.35 a.m. Pacific time. I assume we have important news to share with you, as well as a screenshot with a long message that we're going to read. Now... I personally thought, like Kaisa thought, that this was a joke. It is not a joke. This is very much real. Uh, and to all of us, I don't know. Maybe Cyberpunk should just delay indefinitely. Who knows? Who knows? So they start off by writing, hey, everyone. Today, we've decided to move the release date of Cyberpunk 2077 by 21 days. The new release date is December 10th. Most likely, there are many emotions and questions in your head, so first and foremost, please accept our humble apologies. The biggest challenge for us right now is shipping the game on current gen, next gen, and PC at the same time, which requires us to prepare and test nine versions of it for the Xbox One and X compatibility on Xbox Series S and X written, look, it looks like a it looks six, like it's six. terrible <laughs> formatting. Yeah, I was like, what is the Xbox Series 6? Um, the PS4 and PS4 Pro compatibility on PS5, PC, Stadia, etc., etc., while working from home. Since Cyberpunk 2077 evolved towards almost being a next-gen title somewhere along the way, they said we need to make sure everything works well and every version runs smoothly. We're aware it might seem unrealistic when someone says that 21 days can make any difference in such a massive and complex game, but they really do. 
Goes on to say that some of you might also be wondering what these words mean in light of us saying we achieved our gold master some time ago. Passing certification or quote unquote going gold means the game is ready, can be completed, and has all content in it. But it doesn't mean we stop working on it and raising the quality bar. On the contrary, this is the time where many improvements are being made, which will then be distributed via a day zero patch. And this is the time period we are uh, undercalculated. We feel we have an amazing game on our hands and are willing to make every decision, even the hardest ones, if it ultimately leads to you getting a video game you'll fall in love with. Yours, Adam Badowski and Marcin Iwinski. Now, I think there's a lot of contention to specifically that just yesterday, they were responding to tweets from people asking, is this game in fact coming out on this date? And saying it was for sure confirmed. Literally yesterday they were saying that um, chat says as long as you don't have bugs day one, they also have been trying to iron out bugs as fast as they can. And it seems like that they still need, you know, a, um, you know, a game, a, a day zero patch um, and they have a lot of work to do still. Do you think it's going to get delayed again or do you think this is going to be the end all be all date? You know, I wish I could give that answer uh, honestly, but my honest reaction is like, I I don't want to make any more guesses. Like I, I, I tweeted this earlier and I'm just at the point where I'm like, you guys have delayed so much over so much. one year and just the constant like, oh, you're going to get it. Now you're going to have to wait. Oh, you're going to get it. Now you have to wait. Oh, you're going to get it. But now you got to wait again. You might as well just delay indefinitely and release the game when it's ready. Stop doing this to us. Because I wouldn't be shocked if 15 days from now, they're like quarter two of 2021. You know what I mean? So I would just rather be like, all right, it's off the table. I don't know when it's coming out. And then they're like, okay, it's officially releasing in a month. And here it's already shipped out and the stores have it. Pixie makes a good point that they probably only kept it in December to try to get to Christmas. I mean, putting the date as December 21st, December 10th or 21st. Where, where was it in the suite? Where was it in the suite? December 10th. Um, I, I think it's cutting it really close. I feel like the game's not going to be polished when it comes out. It seems that they're really in a crunch. I wish that they didn't even announce back in March like a new delay date. I wish they just said this is indefinitely delayed. And then once they felt like the game was actually, you know, close enough to being done that they could very confidently, you know, have a release date, then they should have done that instead of trying to set these goals for themselves that they just keep on moving. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that correction. I put 21 because it's a 21 day release. So I thought December 21st. Um, oh yeah, in my head I was like, I think I saw 21 somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's where that's where my brain had that. Thank you for for catching that. No, it's it's still it's just it's, it's again it's one of those things where um, this game has already been highly anticipated. People have been waiting for it for a long time. This narrative constantly shifting shifting of when the game's being released. It, there are Night City wires that they've been doing like where this decision got made, ha it had to really actually be within like in the past like 12 hours before that tweet, they were like, we just have to do this, you know, and this has to be, this is just has to be the case. But to save public scrutiny, there's, they just got to stop. I just, that's the part where I'm at now. I'm like, someone had, had put it up there in the chat and I totally agree where it's like, they're going to lose the hype and they're going to lose the confidence of potential customers if they keep doing this. And even now, I'm sure you've got a lot of people just being like, I, I'm probably not even going to get, you know, I'm probably not even going to get the game until I know it's like, fit, like it's actually patched and ready to play. Right. Chad says they're teasing us. They're teasing us so hard. I know the past few weeks I've even gotten like people coming into my chat being like, oh, Cyberpunk delayed again as like a meme, as like a troll, because like it is a meme at this point. I feel like I'm going to see that again over the next, you know, month of like, oh, like Cyberpunk's delayed again. Oh, just kidding. But like, Actually, it could be. LOL, the Crochet says, I'm suing CD Projekt Red. Oh, right, you booked time off for Cyberpunk. The Crochet took time off of work in order to play Cyberpunk 2077. You know, it literally affects people's lives. Just don't say release date until you're ready. That's the thing, too, is I saw Crow's tweet, and then I looked under the comments, and there were so many other comments where people had said, I took day my day off of work to be ready for this game. And they were like, oh, we're so sorry. And I'm just kind of like, right. 
you guys got to do something better than we're so sorry. You know what I mean? There's got to be some sort of digital, like some incentive. Hey, we've strung all of you along for a really long time now, and we're sorry. Here's a bunch of uh, like items to help your characters out in your journey or whatever. If they do something like that, you know, I think that'll really negate a lot of these negative emotions. Um, but there, there has to be some some gesture of, of apology that goes into the time that we'll be putting into the game. My only reservation with doing something to apologize to everyone is that it's going to be even more work for them, even if it's just like, here's like a free like car that you get because we're so sorry. I don't even know if they can handle that extra work of doing that. Um, Croatia also makes a good point, and they went gold. There was so much hype, like, Cyberpunk already gold, like sold so many copies. And I feel like it's it's not quite there. This is an exaggeration, but it feels to me a little bit like this is Star Citizen, where oh people are God. saying like, oh yeah, this game's gonna come out soon. We're gonna throw a ton of money into this game. We believe in it, and it just like never comes out. And some people asked a fair question like, why don't you just release it uh, based on what systems are ready? Instead of trying to release yeah. it where all systems are ready, get it out for the PC on that day. Say, hey, look, you know, the, the current gen consoles, we'll get it a couple weeks later as we can test and make sure it's ready for that. Like, why not do that in, in, in waves to at least, again, calm the community because the community is is i know very upset all you have to do is 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 hop on and see you know comments on youtube videos that are reporting about it and and tweets and you can see the disdain that people have now at this point because it's it's just become this this joke i mean i think i think we will be talking about games uh, in reference to Cyberpunk 2077 delays as new IPs come out down the road and are like, we're going to release, we're going to delay. Well, it's another 2077. Right. I, I, to me, it sounds like an excuse when they're like, oh, we want it to release on everything at the same time. It's like, no one cares. Like oftentimes, like that's not the case. Oftentimes, like certain countries, you know, typically like the US get it before others. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like gamers like, sure it kind of sucks that you can't release at the same time but if you're shipping out physical copies and you have to do things different for console like I, I kind of get it like that's fine um I, I don't think that that's you know putting the community in uproar at least I haven't heard anyone being really angry you know that it's going to come out on PC first like I don't think anyone really cares no I, I just I've this was so disappointing. I don't think I, I think everybody's like me in this moment. They've just been super excited and happy and knowing this day was going to come and it, it was going to be this wonderful escape. And now you just hear this December 10th date and you're just like, is that even real? You know what I mean? Like, is it? I've heard so many dates now at this point. Is it? Who knows? It's really meme now. It really is going to release in 2077 at this point <laughs> is, is what it feels like if it delays later or I, I wouldn't be surprised if it comes to December 10th and maybe there's a version out on PC um, maybe there's a patch a day one patch you know which is the ultimate form of procrastination as Rixie said um, and it's going to be kind of buggy and maybe it's going to be like the PS5 pre-orders where like some people get it but others like their shipping delays for their copies I wouldn't be surprised if it's kind of a disaster I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if they kind of blame COVID for it um, as kind of a cop out that people might be more understanding to and we even said, I want to I want to address this. We even talked about how like back in April when that delay happened and due to the pandemic and everything, we were like, just go to 2021. Like if you really yeah, think it's going to be that bad, fine. just push it a year. Everyone, everyone, everyone else was doing that in other areas that knew they had games that were going to be affected by the pandemic. But they were like, no, we can do this. We can make it. We can get it. And I think that's just part of where it was like, you made us feel this way. You encouraged us. You assured us that this was going to be mm -hmm. here. And now we're where we're at now that we're just like, we would have just been happy not even thinking about this game until, you know, sometime next year being excited for it to come out. And that's, it's like fatigue. I think that's what it is. It's it's yeah. release date fatigue. There it is. Release date fatigue. It is. And Maron, you're even doing like a countdown on our stream, like three weeks ago, like we're going to get it. You know, like, let's go everyone. And now it's like, who knows? We'll try our best. We'll probably do another countdown, but take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, I took that hype train right off the tracks parked it left the train and i'm already walking off into the sunset <laughs> so sad but in brighter news yes. 100 Thieves is turning its la headquarters into a voting center this is awesome a wonderful way to use your space to help assist in areas where it looks like we need assistance when we shouldn't because 100 thieves is following in the footsteps of the nba and turning its home base into a voting center 
the gaming and lifestyle company announced that the 100 Thieves Cash App compound, which is a 15,000 square foot building, which officially opened this year, uh, will serve as an official LA County voting center. And it's going to be open from October 30th to November 2nd, as well as on election day on November 3rd. The company also partnered with graffiti artist Slick to create a temporary mural on the mural on the building. Right now it says vote, but it will be changed to say we voted on November 2nd. The voting process will also follow standard safety guidelines as voters will have to wear face coverings and gloves while practicing social distancing. And for those in Los Angeles, um, I can post the address in the chat if you are interested um, in, in voting at the 100 Thieves compound. And Nade Shot released a statement saying this, ever since we put down roots in this pocket of Los Angeles with the opening of the 100 Thieves Cash App compound at the beginning of the year, we've been looking for ways to give back to the community. We are thankful for the Los Angeles County Registrar Recorder and County Clerk for the work that they are doing this election season, and we are excited to partner with them to offer up our space. 100 Thieves is best known for its professional teams in games like League of Legends, Fortnite, and Valorant, along with big, along with signing big name creators like Courage and Valkyrie. It also has an insane, you know, merch business where they just do like hot drops, limited edition. Um, they're super trendy. A lot of, you know, like music artists and athletes want to partner with 100 Thieves. Um, they even had like a whole thing with Ariana Grande as well. They like went backstage to meet her. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, they're like they're like the cool esports or. Yeah. They and they are and and I think this is just a a great way to take your status and recognition within the community, take your space that you can use if you so choose it, and assist in something as powerful as an election. Um, you know, I think we all recognize there are some areas in which finding a place to go in and to vote is very difficult to do right now. Unfortunately, that is the case. And with that being said, the people who do have the space to help alleviate that. Um, uh, aspect, you know, in, in being in existence, they could do so. And seeing seeing Nate Shot and the Hundred Thieves compound do that is 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 awesome. I'm I'm really happy to see this kind of stuff. Too, and I think this is a really great way to kind of turn this compound into more of a community center because, like, for like the I think TSM has a compound, but it's like, why why would I go there? Like, it's cool for the people in the org, but like, it doesn't really mean much to me. Versus, you know, with the Hundred Thieves compound, I think they have a physical merch shop there that you can go visit. And I think this is also a cool way. Like, I'm sure maybe they're not going to be doing like a tour of the whole place, but I'm sure that this is like a cool like reason to go and and check it out. And I think it's you know really cool that um, that they're getting politically involved because typically a lot of games and a lot of gamers are like we don't want to do anything with politics you know versus 100 thieves just being like hey like come on vote like please come to our compound to vote if you need to vote in person exactly and this is uh this is i think another one of those moments too where 100 thieves is helping themselves in terms of their public um acceptance not just by gamers but by other areas that may not yes. be directly involved in gaming because you do mm -hmm. recognize community outreach you might not understand you know who in fact is doing the outreach outreach and where they come from and why they're successful in that area but that might not be what first catches you know your attention to this so that's why i think this choice is just it's an all-around good choice for those who have never heard of 100 thieves and what they what they do and what they're trying to do and for those who obviously you know do follow them or maybe even some who might have had a negative image of them if they did this is another one of those moments to just uh uh to really do good across the board that's so true. And I think they're they're reaching more in into the mainstream, into the non-gaming space. As you said, you know, if someone's just like, hey, my closest voting center is 100 Thieves. I don't know what that is. Oh, cool. What is this? This is a video game thing? This is a yeah. video game team? You know, um, I've also, I'm pretty sure I saw 100 Thieves like style sweaters and stuff at Urban Outfitters. Like it said like Thieves on it or like 100 Thieves on it. And I was like, I didn't know that this was a thing. So I think that they're doing a lot more to kind of, you know, ingratiate themselves into like the non-gaming space in general, which I think is super cool. That's awesome. And then I love seeing like Kane's like, hey, I've heard of them because of Kaiser. And that's the thing you'll get too. you get more streams talking about them, uh, addressing this, you know, uplifting this type of uh, uh, activism and, and seeing that. Uh, that's that's awesome. And, and following into our next story of awesomeness is if you're excited about the Uncharted movie, there was recently a photo released of Tom Holland on set. And then right around, I think, a day or two ago, is when another announcement was made accidentally by Mark Wahlberg, where he took a video of himself uh, in character in his trailer. So we'll we'll dive into all of this. 
It's been over a decade since work began on a movie based on Naughty Dog's popular Uncharted games. In that time, the film has cycled through seven directors, five release dates, and a series of scripts and actors. But a new picture from Tom Holland, its star, who will be playing a younger version of series hero Nathan Drake in full costume as the character gives the best evidence yet that the film is actually happening this time. The shot is not really much to go by. It is just a photo of Tom Holland, which you're about to see here coming up. It's in his cargo pants, his his Henley. You know, he's got his pistols holstered. You know, this is how you know Nathan Drake to look like. And there we see Tom Holland in, in the full getup. It's also hard not to fixate on the fact that the 24-year-old Tom Holland looks pretty young as Nathan Drake, given that Nathan Drake in the games is in his mid to late 30s, which, you know, so so there's a big difference here. But this movie is reportedly set to be a prequel and origin story for the character. And what is a still jarring shift for anyone accustomed is that uh, when you actually compare this to other live action interpretations of the character in the media, like the commercials, or a particularly good fan film that starred Nathan Fillion and Stephen Lang as the pitch perfect replicas of Drake and his mentor uh, Sully is this stark contrast when we look at Tom Holland. Original Nathan Drake voice actor Nolan North also shared a few images from the set, which appears to prove that the Uncharted movie, which at least for now is still being directed by Ruben Fleischer, uh, is in fact a real film that is actually in production and could one day be something you'll get to watch in theaters. And it is set to hit theaters in July 16th, 2021. Of course, barring any changes due to the, the COVID-19 pandemic, that is what they have down for Sony's theatrical release schedule. I think it looks pretty cool. It seems like we're actually going to get this movie here. I hope it's going to be good. I mean, I honestly haven't seen any of the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies, but people seem to be a big fan of him and, and of his work. Yeah, I would say he's a, he's a good actor. He's got a like a, a, a great personality and he does seem like a person who's very much like a humble down to earth loves to interact with his fans and just be very approachable uh kind of individual i think for anybody who's a fan of the uncharted series they understand the casting choice of going young so you have more films down the road but it also is very odd because we haven't really gotten an iteration of nathan drake this young and no matter what, yeah. it, it still is one of those things that I think you're going to have some resistance to because of what we've been used to seeing uh, Nathan Drake be portrayed as. So this movie is set to hit theaters next July is the current plan. I feel like a lot of that is definitely pending, um, you know, per the pandemic, obviously. I think they are really going to try to release this in theaters. It seems that some movies don't want to go to streaming and are kind of holding out. Um, I think like the new James Bond movie is like ready and done, but, you know, they want that to be a theater experience. So I think they're going to try the same thing for this one. And we'll just be keeping our eye on more Uncharted information as it drops. But there was a rumor recently that we definitely want to talk about because this would make sense with the success of the last Star Wars game, but it looks like that there is a Force, Force Unleashed sequel in the works. Avid fans of Star Wars video game catalog will be totally thrilled to learn about this. So there's a new rumor that suggests that LucasArts is working on a third Star Wars The Force Unleashed console game, and it's reportedly in early development. To the uninitiated, The Force Unleashed is an action-adventure video game series which ran from 2008 to 2010. While it didn't do as well as titles like Knights of the Old Republic and Battlefront, it still has a very loyal fan base. And this report comes from insider Daniel Rickman, who revealed plans for a third game and what he was saying he had learned was that, the, of course, with no official confirmation, we have to take this all with a grain of salt. But what he had learned was that they are welcoming and re considering returning to Star Wars' hot streak as of late with the success of Fallen Order, as well as the success of Squadrons, they will be revisiting this IP. If the rumors end up being true, LucasArts can finally pick up where the supposed third video game sequel would have left off. As some of you may already know, plans for The Force Unleashed 3 is considered old news as a third game was actually being considered several years back. However, due to undisclosed reasons, it was canceled right before the second game was released. Now, a lot of gamers believe that it wouldn't hurt to see Galen Merrick's potential return to the Star Wars gaming universe should plans push through. And I think a lot of Star Wars fans were wondering when Fallen Order had got announced, hey, why didn't you just make it like this, but with the Force Unleashed characters and story you had already built into? And I think 
those games play entirely differently, and that's probably why they made that decision. But seeing the success of what they were able to do with uh, Fallen Order and knowing, especially with the next-gen consoles, there's a lot that they can tap into with this specific uh, intellectual property. I'm cool if they come back to this and re revisit it. But I, I personally, is like, I hear all this Star Wars stuff. I love Squadrons. It's a lot of fun. I thought Fallen Order was uh, uh, great. I just want to see a return to like KOTOR, like real KOTOR. Hey. Let's bring it back. Let's make it happen. Let's get a legit remake for Knights of the Old Republic looking like this and uh, and sign up every Star Wars fan that's ever existed. <laughs> I think it would be cool if, you know, they had this third sequel game come out. I, I think that would be great. You know, there's a, there's a lot of Star Wars hype. Um, Adidas just dropped like a Adidas and Star Wars shoes that's coming out November 4th. Yeah. Um, but as you said, it seems like a, there's been so much hype about KOTOR. So many people just love, love, love KOTOR. Why don't they just do a revival of that instead? I think would be like an even better idea. It would be, you know, I I think there's maybe just a lot of fear behind that because if you think about it, what happens when a remake comes out and it's not as good as people remember it? Right. So KOTOR is a big game. And anyone who's played it, minus the beginning of KOTOR, which the first world in KOTOR is like, it's rough. But then once you get off that planet and you go and you start to explore and you're on your ship and you go into all the different uh, 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 locations after that, it just like turns into this massive game with with so much appeal um mm -hmm. that maybe there is this kind of like there are certain films we just should never remake and i think the industry <laughs> knows that uh right. so we won't ever see them remade and this could be the case with them they're like maybe we shouldn't touch it because we don't want the backlash if we don't uh, if, if if we under deliver that might be true. You know, the bar is set so high that if they don't make it, you know, as as good of an experience and much better, you know, I think a lot of people will think that they have dropped the ball, which is which is maybe, I guess, why they're not considering that and, and they might push through with this. Um, I was wondering if anyone in the chat is getting Star Wars fatigue at all, because it doesn't seem to be the case. I mean, I'm not, but they've been releasing a ton of like of like um, like content with the Mandalorian, with all these Star Wars games coming out with a lot of partnerships, with a lot of merch, with a lot of just like there, there's an anime series as well um or are people just kind of eating it up and they're like the more star wars content the better thank you so much kai for gifting that sub to rixie and giving out some gifts to others in the chat thank you thank you so much thank you thank you uh chat says not at all so far yeah i don't think so i think <laughs> i think a lot of people are just all about star wars keep going star wars you're doing great i think there's so much content there for storytelling for gameplay for experiences galore that as long as we don't just recycle the same storylines, like certain mm -hmm. new iterations in the storyline have just basically cycled old storylines and reskin mm -hmm. them, that's when you get fatigued. But with, you know, games like Fallen Order and even movies like Rogue One, you get that experience that you're like, this is awesome. I want more of this. Keep creating in this type of space. Absolutely. But our next story is going back to Mark Zuckerberg, as we sometimes talk about him and Facebook. Um, anyone in the chat, make sure you don't delete Facebook, even though I've been telling everyone to delete their Facebook. Don't delete Facebook if you have an Oculus, because you might lose all of your Oculus games for good. So if you got that Oculus VR headset and you were thinking about deleting that Facebook to get off of the social media grid, you may want to reconsider because completely deleting Facebook's account linked to your Oculus device means you lose all access to the VR games that you've purchased and you will not be able to get them back even if you make a new account. You're required to link a Facebook account when using the Oculus Quest 2 headset. And if your Facebook account isn't in good standing, you will not be able to use the Oculus Quest 2 at all. Because of this connection, you must keep that account to have access to the purchases you've made. <laughs> you don't necessarily have to link a Facebook account yet on the older Oculus devices, including the first Quest, but Upload VR, which the website pointed out that support for separate Oculus accounts ends in 2023, and then all users will need Facebook. So if you deactivate your Facebook account instead of permanently deleting it, you also won't be able to access any of your Oculus information. Now, this can be reversed by reactivating it. And the, while the deletion method does not have a quote unquote undo, what you can realize is if you make a new account, you'll have to purchase all of that content again. This seems to apply to Facebook accounts that are banned as well. So your safest 
bet is to keep your Facebook, but not use it very much, which is an extremely troubling restriction. In the past, we've talked about Facebook accounts that have been um, like, like deactivated or blocked because someone was part of a Fallout 76 role-playing group. Um, and so their account was deactivated. And if they had an Oculus Quest 2, then they wouldn't have been able to access their games. And despite these restrictions, Facebook has made its Quest platform quite enticing recently. That latest iteration, uh, the Quest 2, is less expensive, it's lighter, and includes a higher resolution screen than its predecessor, along with a more comfortable strap design. And with no more versions of the Rift being made, the company is all in on its standalone headset, which can also play PC-powered VR games via the Oculus Link cable. That does mean you can play high-end VR games like Half-Life Alex, essentially meaning you'll only need a VR headset unless you're interested in playing you only need one vr headset unless you're interested in playing playstation vr exclusives this is such a shame because i think the oculus 2 is such a great piece of technology i love using my oculus quest i love you know being wireless not being tethered to anything the oculus quest 2 has a nice higher resolution lighter headset you know more comfortable to wear and this whole thing where you've just got to connect it to your facebook um and you know people are getting locked out of their accounts because people are creating facebook accounts just to use the oculus quest 2 but those accounts look too new and too sketchy for the algorithm that they get shut down because facebook's like oh this is a fake account and they're like, I'm a real person. I needed to make one, you know, to use my Oculus. Yeah, it does. Hey, uh, success to Kai Almighty with the black coffee guest that is in the mug for Marone. Good job there. I wonder what gave it away. <laughs> my my very infrequent sips. <laughs> Um, EJ says, sounds like a ploy to keep your Facebook open, not fishy and all, at all. Um, and, and I just wanted to add, since I don't think we'll have time to get into the full story today, but, you know, Facebook is launching a cloud service and... It seems like, according to Business Insider at least, that that cloud service is really just a way for them to sell ads and to make more revenue. So it doesn't seem like they're really into gaming at all. It just seems like a ploy, you know, to sell ads, to make money, to get people, you know, to to, to link their Facebook, to use Facebook. And I thought I was being paranoid um, saying that I wouldn't want, you know, an Oculus device linked to Facebook, but I have seen articles coming out that other people are concerned because the Oculus has external cameras so it can see inside your house. Um, and there are articles saying that people don't like that there are cameras that can see inside your house linked to Facebook that theoretically could upload that information as well as your body movements and things like that in game. So it's not just me concerned about that. Yeah, and recently, I gotta look up the name. It has it has a unique name. There is a uh, uh, a developer for virtual reality headset which got some traction through Upload VR. They're a great resource to find out what's going on with virtual reality, and it it is a headset that is a hundred and twenty hertz. It has the external cameras like the Quest and doesn't have any of the Facebook requirements in order to have it. And their price point, they're saying they're going to be able to release it at is four ninety nine. So Ooh. there is a potential sleeper on this new VR headset that's in the works. I got to look up the name and, and I'll link that either in our Discord or talk about it on our next episode so I can remember it. But I remember seeing it and reading the specs and I was like, this is like the Oculus Quest and the Valve Index had a baby and they decided <laughs> to make it actually affordable. What? What? Like, that's exactly what I want. Uh, Rixie says, I think Spotify lets you decouple your Facebook and Spotify if you email them. I don't know if that was always the case. I had them linked and I just deleted my Facebook and my Spotify I just got deleted too. And I was like, whatever, I can't be bothered. Um, I also saw an ad recently on, I was watching Hulu and Hulu has a lot of ads, but one of them was for <laughs> Firefox and Fi Firefox's ad was like on um, it, it was it was basically, you know, talking about privacy and they were like, uh, the, the slogan was like on F star 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 like your internet usage and like unzuck on be untracked be untraced be un you know whatever and it's kind of this push to like stop giving all of your data and all of your private information to these big companies and it said Firefox is like backed by a nonprofit which which I didn't realize but it seems like that there is this you know while while Facebook is going towards getting all of your information we've seen a lot of you know these analytics and and this data gathering from a lot of big tech companies we're also seeing you know, the counter trend, yeah. which is like, we understand consumers don't want to share 
everything in their lives with, with, with you know, these big companies that will profit off of their data. Um, and there is that push, you know, for more privacy, which I think is very cool. I really want to see more of that. I think I might become a Firefox power user. I think you should, because I've always been a huge fan of uh, Mozilla's efforts to protect you and, uh, you know, be on the side of your privacy understanding uh, all of it that you that you just mentioned there. And yeah, I am with Kai. I'm like, as l- if you sell our info, pay us for it, and I'm cool with you getting it. I mean, that's one thing that people have been talking about for a little bit of time now for the past two years. It's like, yeah, you guys are making trillions, and we're getting zero, and it's our information that you're profiting off of. How come we don't get a kickback? But then it's like, but that's a slippery slope, and that's obviously a, a, a point for a, a different conversation. But this is one <laughs> of those things to pay attention to because with regard to uh, Facebook having this as a means to its, you know, terms of service, if you delete your account, you lose all of your games. You know what I mean? Like, right. What? I I don't understand that. So my games aren't actually physically mine on a download somewhere that I can go and get and provide you my debit card and provide you my payment information. And it's mine. It's directly linked and associated to my Facebook account. So in order to maintain my investment, I have to maintain my Facebook account. It's a it's a shady practice. I think we can all kind of agree there. I, I think it's super shady and it would make sense if like if if that was the predominant use of your Facebook account, like if you delete your Spotify, yeah, you all of your playlists are gone. I understand that. But like Facebook isn't just a site for, you know, the Oculus. It's for so many other things. Um, and and they want to, you know, have your life on there and have you read all your news on there and, you know, use use the site as much as you can and share all these things, you know, with your peers on Facebook. It's it's I think it's overstepping for them. Um, and I hope that a lot of people, you know, kind of take a stand against that and and show Facebook that like you can't just take advantage of anyone like we don't want that to happen like heck off facebook yeah, heck off. And what's up, Isabere? <laughs> welcome, welcome. Well, here's what we're going to do. We did have a couple uh, other articles that we were going to talk about, but this Little Nightmares 2 preview is there. It's about 20 minutes long. We forgot to tell you to prep your popcorn, so get it uh-huh. in there now. Um, and one of the things that we want to say that we will be talking about on the next episode was we wanted to address, yes, of course, with the Cyberpunk delay, just yesterday one of the devs was saying that they have not seen anything cut out of the game due to the amount of delays and crunch time that has happened, which is a good sign. And then we'll also get in deeper to Facebook and how it's going to use its cloud service to sell uh, to sell ads. We're going to be talking about the Mandalorian update that's dropping for Star Wars Squadrons, in which Baby Yoda, that's right, is coming to Star Wars Squadrons. We'll also get into how a live-action Assassin's Creed Netflix series is apparently on the way. But for now, we are going to get into Little Nightmare 2 gameplay as we have 20 minutes to watch and react to. So all you Little Nightmares fans out there, get ready. Let's enjoy this wonderful preview that they have released for Little Nightmares 2. Kaisa, are you ready? I am so ready. <laughs> I'm going to pull it up here and okay, come on, don't do that to me. What the, oh, uh, 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 wow. Also, thank you, Kane, for gifting us up to Fizzy. Thank oh, you, snap. Thank you. You're part of the family. Okay, here we go. Three, two, okay. one, and go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a sneak peek of Little Nightmares 2, the sequel to the surreal horror game oh, by Tarsier Studios. I love, I love when we have a narrator. Game. Yes. And uh, we get to have a little preview of this one for about 20 to 30 <clears> minutes <throat> and check out what the gameplay is like. I've always loved this game's uh, graphic style, its animation style. So, like, perfectly cute and creepy. It's very, like, Coraline esque. Yes, right. um, yes. Yeah, I, I highly recommend playing so, Little Nightmares uh, if anyone hasn't played it. It's about, four, like it's it took me, I think, only four hours all the way through. The it's a ton of fun. have confirmed that it's actually just single player. Maybe they'll change their mind by the time it comes out. But uh, we play as Mono, I believe the name is. And uh, the protagonist from the first game is our companion. Six. Oh, cool. And, um,. We can even hold hands with them, which is kind of adorable. It's Xbox Series 6. And uh, hopefully we don't <laughs> die together. We can hold hands. Oh, that's cute. So we do have a Ooh. flashlight. I, I'm not sure if that was in the first game or not. You can call over your companion, by the way. Sorry, you can shine the light on them. I want to hold hands and feel Oh, don't shine the flashlight at 6. The right? And death that's probably coming to me. Uh, the cool thing is our companion can over here and give us a lift 
Oh, look at that. That's cool. The the companion. I was just wondering. Uh, I was like, that means you guys worked work, work together, Ready right? I'm wondering if having the light on. Yeah, more like the commentator than narrator. I love how it's like, oh, it's so cute, and then we're into a morgue. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Great. <laughs> it's the Adams family hand. Yeah. Get away from me, please. No. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, no. All right, we're super fragile. Oh! I'm not sure if we're meant to jump on top or if I was meant to slide. I did a really sick slide though. Get away from me. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. The sounds. Oh, it's just climbing after. Oh my god. Good job at like being super stressful without being too much. Yeah. Like when the commentator was like, oh, like get away, get away. Yeah. That kind of feeling. Just the plucking away at that violin right now is like it gets under your skin. Oh, the chefs in the first God. game were like so creepy. They have great like character design. Bad doggy? No. Ugh. It's awful. Oh, little axe. No! What about the hammer? Oh, it's a little hammer. Oh, pick it, slam oh, it. Oh. <gasps> he looked like he was ready oh, to- Oh, it's too heavy! <laughs> That's oh. so badass. I don't remember in the first oh. game ever being able to fight back. I mean, Aww. at least this thing is our size, I guess. Oh. Oh, it's so, so meaty. All the animations are so It looks cool. so tough to use. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. All right. No, it's coming back. Wow. Can we bring out the hammer again? I can bring out the bring hammer. Bring out again. the hammer. This is this is your doing. Oh. Yeah, Rixie, this music is stressful. Oh, oh. Mm. Ah. Come on. This looks Come so on. hard. Come on. Oh, the, the You're track. looking at little nightmares too. So cool. Come on, get it. Ah. There you go. There it is. Nice. <sighs> this game is set to come out, I believe, February 2021. Sorry, February 11th, 2021. Keeps getting stuck on those shards of glass. All right, there you go. I like the commentator's oh voice God. as oh, if he himself is pulling the box. He's like, eh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, is he actually playing? Because it didn't seem like that at the that beginning. That so scary. Oh. Are you here, buddy? You're still alive? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? This is already a nightmare. E.g., those are hard facts right there. Oh. oh. At least this game will come out when they say it's gonna come Six. out. Are you all right, buddy? What are you doing, Six? You okay? Playing, Still playing a with bit the. Disturbed. All right, just come with me. Let's hold hands and go. Aww. Oh my God, this. This would be a great. Can someone cosplay this at a so convention with me? And we'll just hold hands and run around the convention floor. I'm, like, did we? Oh. Did they? <laughs> that glowing thing was probably a power source that we can bring over, and pop it in there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I got it. Oh, I wouldn't have thrown that, but you know what? Maybe you you know better than me. Yeah, pop the it sound in. design's really good. Really yeah, all the sounds this. sound really nice. great. 
All right, so I assume we just need to find the other, the other section of the game where a monster will chase us, and then we get a second power. <laughs> Ooh, who's that? Oh, there's one here. I see. We're gonna pop it in there, and then, okay. All right. These bodies are uh, really unsettling. Yeah, they're just the bodies just sitting around. You're like, are they gonna come out and come after me? What do I do? How do I handle this? I'm no. so nervous. <laughs> no, dude, out there. Six is just thinking, why am I not the main character again? <laughs> <laughs> I've been through this already. This guy can't even put the thing in the right switch. Is this the same location it was in the first one? It doesn't look like it. The first one was in a ship oh, in the Maw. But this looks like an asylum. It does, yeah. I never understood why we're so tiny. Are we a different species? Mm. Was Sorry, that question ever answered? Very, nope, you're very, just tiny. Uh, loose, kind of like Dark Souls. <laughs> like, it's all just hidden for you to figure out. It's not really in your face. Yeah, the first game you're just so, playing a six and you're right. just in the ship and you just have to get out. Can like, we, that's it. Yeah. Got it. Can we squeeze through here? No, Let's nothing else besides that. Room. Oh, but you will give this me a lift. This is all so you know. Why don't and I give go. you a lift, huh? Oh. Oh, great. Oh. My god. Big boost. Oh! Why are you standing there like that? Yeah. Oh! I'm like, they're gonna come to life at any moment. Oh! Uh. <gasps> Great. So does this is like the mannequins from Silent oh, Hill. The light makes them stop. Oh Ooh. my god. <laughs> that is so scary. Uh, oh my uh. god. That is so scary. That is such a genius uh. mechanic. Uh, you know what? Let's maybe keep the flashlight on. Uh, yeah, cool. keep the flashlight on. You stay where you are, okay? Great mechanic. Oh, wow. I feel like I could open that cabinet. Oh, my God. They look so... This is like Silent Hill, too. Oh, this one wants to move, I can tell. Buddy, I'm gonna go in here and you're not gonna do anything about it, okay? <laughs> oh, in the corner. In the corner. Why do you have such a strange head? Oh my god. There's so many. Oh man. Oh god. Uh. Ah! Can they get you under the bed? Oh, this feels like Outlast now too. This is this this is uh this, this is a nightmare. Oh my god. You're just looking for a way to turn all the lights on. What? Oh, oh get through the door! Go, 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 run! And so clever. It's so it's so clever. No more, no more, no more. Oh, get me the hell out of here. Please bring back the hand. I'd much rather deal with that. <laughs> the musical score was good, too, because of the way they slowly, it slowly, ever so slightly brought up the, the sound and volume. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh! oh. The roof! The oh god, no! Wall section. Oh. Okay. Let's maybe take it slower. Oh, slide, slide! Apex Legends! Oh! Ah! Ah! Yeah, they are like mannequins, yeah. God, climb, 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 get in there. There it is, there it is, there it is. That's what I'm talking about. My God, let's go. Not let's go. Cool. Oh, big jump. 
Gotta turn on one light. Looks like there's some sort of secret here. Or maybe I'm just meant to go here? No, this is definitely a secret. I can smell it. I can smell it. Mmm, lovely secret. Uh, is that a snake? Really lovely secret. Right in the top? Yeah. Ew. <laughs> I hate this room. Let me just get out of here. I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> there's there's nothing in there. Get the one from across the room. Unless there's something to take Why in there to the solve I'm not going to be able to open right? this door in peace. Yeah, that one looks like a real dead body, not a mannequin. Something's coming out of the drain, right? Are those like little bars of soap? It looks like it. Or maybe I'm just being negative and nothing bad will happen at all. Okay, now it makes a little bit more sense why the game isn't co-op now. I guess, mm. because there are large stretches of time where you're completely alone. The man, it would have been great. Yeah, I was, I was wondering if there was gonna be a co-op. Oh my God, is he gonna get chased around by the oh wheelchair God. thing? Ugh. In fact, I'd even go as far as to say I hate this room. Let's think about this for a second. We need a key to open this. Maybe there was a key in that gross bathtub? I like how in this game you like you don't know oh, if you're safe or not. Like you might something. feel safe. Like will those bodies turn move? Off the lights? Yeah. It is chamomile tea. Good and guess, Chad. Hey. Hey. hey, specifically honey vanilla I'm chamomile, sure but I wasn't gonna I hold you all to that. that you should have. <laughs> oh, why can I turn off the light? Okay. Yeah, you guys can move around now. Not sure why I did it, but. Why do we have to turn off the light? Oh, Jesus Christ. I was expecting it and I still got jump scared. Okay. Oh! Okay. You stay there. Oh, I can use your chair, you fool. Oh, maybe okay. we need that person Actually, or something? Or we need the wheelchair. Yeah. So turn the light on. Oh. Oh, turn the You're light back on. You're welcome to come on. if you want, my friend. Oh, no, Kyle. Sorry, I didn't realize it. Ooh. My God. Wow. Please wow. Please turn off the lights. I just don't want the lamp to like. This is a game that would make me bite all of my nails. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, there's a hole there. I don't need a stupid key. Oh my god. Oh man. Sounds like a like a faint buzzing, like 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 a hive. Oh, is that yeah. Yeah. Oh, my Oh my face. god. Hey. No, thank you. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh uh, no. <laughs> I was doing so well. Uh, <sighs> how do you see? I know, oh right? God. It's so scary that you like need them to move sometimes, like to get that wheelchair. Oh, very nice, very nice. Stop it! There's oh! Here. Stop it, okay? You don't want to come here. Uh... <laughs> oh. We just turn on the electric chair. Yeah. There's nothing in there. Can I? Am True. I strong? Hey, buddy. Oh, hey, look. <sighs> nice. Ooh, Two I'm, points. I'm really strong. All right. Yes, my friend. You go pop that in. Oh my god, we're actually out safely. Ooh. All right. Okay. I don't mind locking those guys. Yeah, what was the two points at? Her shooting. No, I was making a joke. Oh, it's a, like a like a basketball oh, shot. Basketball. Oh. Do you mind just shot the. Oh, they actually are. Busy also didn't get <laughs> that. I was also so trying to figure. Out. I love that. I, I love was like that. points with guessing oh. the mod. They don't turn off the useless. They're actually bringing it over without me saying anything. All right, hurry up. 
Come on. Marone also has a, a podcast called the uh, Nerd Rock, right? The Nerd Rock. Yeah, podcast. the Nerd Rocks podcast. Yeah. Yes. For athletes and gamers, if there are any. Come together as one. We talk about all things uh, sports, gaming, pop culture related, health and fitness, and how it all merges into one. What's up, Titanium? What's up, Focus? Oh, Titanium's from Caffeine. Too. Oh, nice. What's up, Titanium? Yeah. When the elevator goes down, you always know I'll it's a good, good sign. Okay, hold my other hand, hold my other hand. There you go. <laughs> you just don't hold my hand. And these graphics are actually really impressive. They're good, yeah. The, the way the light shines and everything's great. And Little Nightmares play so smoothly, like it's not buggy. Like when you use the controls, they, you know, they, they register and it's, it's just very well made as well. Oh, I thought I had, I had mentioned the podcast before. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's podcasts. I can post some links up in the Discord and everything. It's on, we have our, uh, via, our VODs on YouTube and then uh, we're on Apple Podcasts and Google and um, Buzzsprout and a few others, yeah. Spotify as well. I'm just what we get no story. We get no story on on what this is and why this is like that. Oh god. Yeah, you get no story. None. I kind of didn't mind it for the first one. I didn't mind not having a story. Another one? I'm very hydrated now, thank oh you, gamers. <laughs> no! Oh! Uh. Alright, got one of them. Oh, um, my friend is uh, doing some quick work at the yeah, doors. Nice. They're the brains, I'm the brawn. Oh! Come on, buddy. Yeah, you dodged me. There it is. Yeah, I didn't see that coming. Oh my god. There it is. Get nice. Yeah. Ooh. Nice. All right. You want to pull this one together? Or... Oh, you nope. just were lazy? Hello? You want to help me out, buddy? Oh. <laughs> what? Oh, you wanted the right side, I see. All right. Six. Interesting. Yeah, it was a weird. I was like, whoa, Ow. God. That looked like it hurt. <laughs> oh, my God. Those faces. Yeah, it would yeah. be great if they made a co-op version of this. Wow. There's a oh. very giant being. What? Ew! Ew! There you have it. <laughs> wow. I was so excited for the game to begin with, but oh, this made me Oh, that's the entire demo. There's the Coming guy right soon. there. Right. Okay. Now I'm not able to sleep tonight. <laughs> that looks intense. That looks intense. I thought that looked great. You're right, chat. Maybe Little Nightmares 3 is going to be their co-op version, something like that. But this looks great. It comes out February, uh, February of next year, which when I initially read that, I was like, oh, 2021, that's so far away. But February 2021 really isn't. That's I have no perception of time anymore. Not that far away. Oh, and there's so many good games coming out next year. So many have been pushed back to uh 2021 this is another one of those like if you're a big horror fan if you haven't played the first one it's worth playing uh this looks like they've definitely enhanced uh and, and made some nice creative changes the setting works i mean i was getting those silent hill 2 vibes right away you know moving through the hospital asylum type uh, uh moments in the game so i will never play this game uh <laughs> but i'll be happy to watch kaiser play it I, I feel like I'm definitely going to play this game. Um, I think it, it has like a great spin on a lot of, you know, like classic horror themes that you've seen. Like we've seen the asylum done so many times, but I think like the, the mannequins and the mechanic where you have to shine the flashlight at them is, is new and cool. Um, I like how it's like, it's cute. It's spooky cute. Um, the game is, is like a fun challenge. It's, it's not super hard. It's also not crazy easy. I think it's a, it's a perfect level of, you know, you, you won't have to, 
die a million times in order to get past a certain part you'll you'll kind of get the hang of it um it's just fun it's overall fun highly recommend yeah it, it, the the hand holding aspect that i see everyone talking about that you were talking about reminded me of unravel uh unravel oh. 2 when you travel with your your companion and in, in unravel yeah. 2 it just had that type of feel but not happy or in a bright colored aesthetic in any way <laughs> compared to unravel 2 just that little bit right there just a little bit. I would love to hear, you know, what other games, you know, everyone's been playing for Halloween games that are already out. I know I still have to play Locked Up. I still have to play Phasmophobia. I've been meaning to still play and stream Phasmophobia, especially with streamers to have have a ghost hunting party happening. Yeah. Um, if any other games you're playing, are you playing any scary games, Marone? I know you don't like scary stuff. No, I'm not a big fan of uh, exposing myself to that if I don't have to actually deal with it in real life. Um... <laughs> I would say, yeah, Phasmophobia is the only game that I've been playing. I was playing that with Kai and Guff. I know we're trying to get a DGN uh, ghost hunting session yeah. uh, um, going on. And um, no, I think I think that's probably the <laughs> only horror game I've been subjecting myself to. But that does bring us to the end of the news. So everyone can go play whatever not horror games. If, if, if that's not your stuff, it's a little too scary for you. Um, but we're going to get into those topics that um, we didn't have time to today. Um, and also just as another reminder, there is no show tomorrow. We're going to be running reruns, but we will be back on Thursday. That is right. Tomorrow being October 28th. So if you're watching this on the 28th, we'll be back on the 29th. But thank you all so much for being here. Everyone, we appreciate you, all the DGN support, the likes, the follows, the subscribes, watching the VODs on YouTube. Thank you, thank you so much. We are not able to do this without all of your support and enthusiasm. If you'd like to submit any topics, any any questions, anything you'd like us to cover, you can do so with exclamation point mailbag. Um, that will bring up a Google form. Um, it can be anonymous, or you can sign your name if you want. Are you streaming later, Marone? I might be. I don't know what I'm going to play yet. I'm torn. I'm so torn on what I might be playing. So I don't want to say it, it could be Phasmophobia or, or, or what else, but with the delay of Cyberpunk 2077, my... My enthusiasm to, to to wait for that game is, has waned, so who knows what I might get myself back into. What a bummer. Um, and then I'm going to be streaming later tonight. Not sure what time. I always say I try to stream early, and then it never turns out that way. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. You'll get a notification. You won't get that notification. And I do have some new emotes in the works. I got to get a couple more followers on my account to be able to hit that. So uh, once I get there, I can unleash these new emotes that I'm really excited to show. I got a pog and a love emote, a heart emote that I'm really happy about. So other than that, again, thank you so much for this hour of the Daily Gaming News with all of you amazing human beings. We will be catching you next time on October 28th, uh, 29th. And that is when we will be seeing you all again. Thank you so much for joining us. But until then, this has been Daily Gaming News for October 27th. I am Kaisa. I am Roan, and we will see you then.